So let's look now at how we might arrange this so that the for each loop is applied only to some of the primitives in our grid and not to others. Well the first thing to do is to go back to our grid and I'm going to select that. Press W to go into wireframe mode. Press S to select for to select primitives. And let's just randomly select a few of these primitives. And then tab group geometry. Let's press L to rearrange our network view. So we've created a group which is these primitives here. I'm going to call it for group and I'm going to call it $OS so that the group name is also for group. And we should see that we have four primitives in for group. The for each SOP doesn't have a group parameter so we can't just run for each SOP directly on certain primitives and not on others. We could use the group parameter of the partition SOP to ensure that we only create these face groups for the primitives that we've just selected. And let's see what we do, let's see what happens when we do that. So we select for group as our group. And we see that we do indeed get balconies on these four primitives, but the other primitives disappear, which is not necessarily what we want. So there is another way of achieving this. Let's get rid of this group in our partition, which is to use a blast SOP. And let's move these up so we've got room for a blast SOP. A blast SOP is just a SOP which deletes geometry. And I'm going to select the group of primitives that we have created and I'm going to delete non-selected. That gives us just the primitives that we selected and these are passed through to the for each loop and we get a balcony on each of these. And then if we click off to the side here we can copy and then paste. The shortcut for that is Control C, Control V. Copy and paste this blast node and change the delete non-selected box to delete selected and that will give us all of the primitives apart from these ones that we'd selected and then if we lay down a merge we can merge together the output of the for each SOP with the other primitives and we get the complete grid with balconies on the primitives that we selected and probably for completeness you would want to add a fuse SOP to make sure that the points here were fused together. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. I'm going to lay down a box and I'm going to lay down a another grid and we'll give it a row and columns of five and then I'm going to copy the box onto each point of the grid, like so. And there we have a, an array of boxes. What I want to do is apply our balcony operation to one face of each of these boxes. So let's just isolate the box and have a look at it. And I want to check the point numbers sorry, the primitive numbers for the faces. And we can see that this phase here, that's nearest to us, has a primitive number of 2. Let's remember that. Now in order to work, we're going to need to use a partition SOP to create groups. Except in this case, we're going to want a group, one group for each cube, rather than for each face of each cube. So we need to do a preliminary step which is to use a connectivity SOP. And what a connectivity SOP does is create an attribute, either at the point level or the primitive level, which is the same where, in this case, primitives are connected to each other. So, in this case, we would find that all of the 
primitives or faces of this cube here would have the same value for the attribute class as all the other primitives or faces on this cube and that value would be different from the value on this cube and that cube and that cube and so on and we can therefore use a partition SOP to create groups cube dollar class because by default the local variable that's created here has the same name as the attribute so we can use dollar class and we should find there we are that it's creating a group for each cube and that we have six primitives six faces of the cube in each group so far so good so let's disconnect let's delete this uh, stuff at the end here and let's connect this into uh, for each SOP now what will happen to start with is that we need to change our group mass to cube is that we'll find that it's creating a balcony on each face which is not necessarily what we want so one way to approach this is to start our SOP network here by just selecting a single face which is just selecting a single face by using a blast and the face that we were looking at earlier was face number two or primitive number two and we delete non-selected and that should give us a single primitive going into this network for each cube and that produces a balcony going downwards but that's not exactly what we want for a start it's orientated in the wrong way and secondly the rest of the cube is missing so we need to use the trick that we used earlier copy this paste it then delete the selected and finish off with a merge yeah to bring this together now we have our balcony but it doesn't really appear to be on the right face so let's try a different face let's try using face number three for example and that's going in there well let's reverse the direction of our final poly extrude and make it positive and then we should finally get a balcony on the front of each of these cubes like so Now let's look at a slightly different way of achieving exactly the same thing. I'm going to get rid of my partition SOP. And I'm going to use the 4 each SOP in its second incarnation, which is each attribute value. So let's select that. And the attribute value I'm going to use is class. So what this should do, and we can see it's already worked, is divide the primitives coming in to our for each SOP according to the value of the attribute class. It then groups them automatically into groups which have the same value of class within a tolerance which is set here. So what that's doing is creating groups of primitives with the same class and then this each SOP down here 
is in fact deleting all of the primitives which don't have the value of class that we happen to be looking at in this iteration of the for each SOP. So this is iterating over the nodes inside once for each different value of class and for each iteration it's only processing those primitives which have the value of class that we're dealing with in that particular iteration. So the first time round it will select a value of class of 0 and only those primitives with a class value of 0 will be operated on by the for each loop.